Okay. I uh, wanted to know something. Uh, I want to know if you could reify an attribute. Uh, those people don't even know what that means. What if it were the case that modern science was like uh, some uh, crazy cult religion and uh, it's governed by a group of hierarchicals, kind of like uh, uh, the Pope and priests and the Catholic Church, and that everything <laughs> that is ever published has to be peer-reviewed? What if it were the case that... Uh, in s that uh, Descriptions and explanations were two totally different things, you know. The ancient Egyptians were obviously masters at uh, building things, and uh, their explanations for the way uh, cosmic mechanics worked, in a literal fashion, was obviously incorrect, saying that, you know, so-and-so pushed up the sun and whatnot. Obviously, their math and their ability to build is even far superior than uh, human beings today. Well, we couldn't duplicate that. I mean, if you put all the money in the world at it, you couldn't duplicate it. There are certain things that we don't even know how the hell they did it, like uh, single pieces of rock turned into vases, and the inside of that vase is uh, hollowed out at such a hard curve that if you paid someone a billion dollars to replicate that, that they couldn't do it. So we have a lost science. So what about... What about the notion of a warp space-time? Now, unfortunately, due to science fiction, which has glorified Einstein and his stupidity, and Einstein was a moron, you know, if we look no further than Nikola Tesla, Henri Poincaré, and by the way, Einstein stole most of his, de his ideas uh, from the writings of Henri Poincaré. You know, here we have uh, an idiot with a theory who didn't invent anything, and here we have another guy that invented the entire modern world. Let's uh, take a look at a quote from Nikola Tesla. Let's talk about the notion of warp space and time. You see, space is a privation, like a shadow. We all know what the hell a shadow is, right? Can you reify a shadow? What does reification mean? That means can you ascribe it as something, as a principle, like the soda can is a principle. Its attributes are that it's aluminum and cold and full of soda. Now, when I place the soda can in, in the face of this light, it creates a shadow. We can't reify an absence as a something. It is a privation, okay? Space is no different than this. I mean, this is trying to dumb it down in a really simple fashion. Quoting Nikola Tesla, to say that in the presence of large bodies, space becomes curved is equivalent to stating that something can act upon nothing. I, for one, refuse to subscribe to such a uh, view. Uh, the theory of relativity is a mass of errors and deceptive ideas violently opposed to the teachings of great men of science of the past and even to, very, to, the, to common sense itself. Since action and reaction are coexistence, uh, coexistent, it follows that the supposed curvature of space is entirely impossible. Einstein is a beggar dressed in purple clothes and made a king using dazzling mathematics that obscure the truth. Today's scientists, this is also Nikola Tesla, have a substituted mathematics for experimentation. They wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure of reality which has a structure which has no relationship to uh, reality. The scientists of today think deeply instead of thinking clearly. One must be sane to think clearly, but one can certainly think deeply and yet be quite insane. That is uh, Nikola Tesla. What does it mean to reify a privation? Most people don't think in terms of Greek uh, dialectics of discussion and uh, thought ontology that uh, that I basically grew up in translate ancient Greek to space has no properties the notion that space warps something or space is something that does something see the ancient Indians talked about this too they they uh, they loved analogies the Indians Indian philosophers were almost as good as ancient Greek Platonic philosophers, especially with their analogies like the works of Sri Sankaracharya, uh, the Upadisahasri and the Veva Chudamuni, and the uh, Upanishads, the Brihadranyaka Upanishad, and uh, various other writings of the time of the 5th century BCE. One of them was the rope snake analogy. 
Um, back then, if you got bit by a cobra in India, you're going to die. You know, there's no cure. You're, you're dead. And so everybody, there's tons of cobras back then. So when you wander out to take a piss in the middle of the night, you know, you're scared to death of cobras because one little bite and you're going to die. Or you're going to suffer and wish you were dead. And it's called the rope snake analogy. And it was uh, an analogy where someone, like an elderly person, would wander around and see a piece of rope and they would mistake it for a snake. And then they'd get so scared they would literally die. You know, like, uh, die of a heart attack because they thought they saw a snake. But how could something which has absolutely no existence, it's like saying that you th thought you saw a unicorn and then you got scared and then fell off a cliff. You know, it's like, oh my god, I thought I saw a, 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 a yeti, a sasquatch, and then I, I like backed up in fear and fell off a cliff. It's like something that has no existence in reality caused something real to happen. If you stick something in a shadow... Can I stick something like a person in the shadow of this uh, this uh, soda can here, and it gets cold because you know obviously when you stand in the shadow of a tree on a hot day, it's cooler. Human stupidity, in its vast, unending ignorance, has the ability and does so, especially in modern science, which is nothing more than a than a freaking cult or a religion. There's a reified absence as something which does things. See, Nikola Tesla and uh, the wiser minds of the world, even the ancient Greeks talked about this. The space was nothing. Space is not something that you could reify. Space is not a principle with a capital P. Okay? It has no autonomous existence. It is literally a posterior privation. Just as the shadow has no existence... If I move the shadow to a soda can, you know, the shadow is going. It has no independent existence. Therefore, it is not a principle. A shadow is a privation. Space is a privation. Space has absolutely no problem. We've grown up in our science fiction world. Where we're all the time hearing about warp space time. Well, we, f we fell through a warp space time hole, and, you know, it's a. Uh, there is no such bullshit. It doesn't exist. Not just because Nikola Tesla said so. Common logic and wiser minds prevail and say that this is absolute nonsense. The entire universe is electrical. Everything in Mother Nature works off force of motion, inertia, and acceleration. There is no such thing as warp space. Space itself is a privation. It is literally the wake front of the reciprocation of magnetism. The supposed, now, even this is something I'll agree with on modern science which is mostly, you know, 95% corrupt morons, is that they'll agree that every atom is like, they'll say, every atom is 99.9999999% empty space. Well, that's not entirely true. But they're basically right. Like an atom is a gigantic balloon with a super, 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 super tiny little bead in the center. <laughs> what makes up the air in the balloon? Is that ether? What is that? That's actually magnetodielectricity. Space is literally the wake front. The, the air in the balloon, if you will, from macro to micro, that makes up uh, every atom, makes up uh, every galaxy, makes up uh, every solar system and uh, galactic entity, is the wake front of the reciprocation of the loss of inertia. It's Faraday called magnetism. Faraday, uh, the first person to really experiment with magnetism, was the person that made the most intelligent statement about magnetism. He referred to magnetism as a dielectric field, and he's right. This is absolutely no different than, I'm going to help you understand something here, to say that magnetism is a dielectric field is no different than saying that light okay, is the principle, is the dielectric, and illumination is the magnetism. Now, how do we differentiate out light uh, from illumination or dielectricity from magnetism? I actually have a famous equation, which is completely my discovery, 1 over 5 to the power of negative 3, which is not a number, 5 cubed, which you think it would be, but it's actually an expression that defines the, uh, the ratio of the loss of uh, illumination from light, but actually specifically defines the loss of inertia that gives rise to magnetism. So, light and illumination, dielectricity and magnetism. One and the same thing, principle and attribute. The wake front of that. Say the wake front of me turning over this light and pointing it at the soda can. I've got more than one light in here, so you can't really see a shadow. It's like, oh my god, we cast a shadow. The wake front, the, the byproduct, the, uh, you know, you feed a horse a bunch of grass, it's gonna crap out a big pile of horse crap. 
the posterior attribute, except that's even more uh, truly a principle because it is something. It's a pile of crap. A shadow in space is not even a pile of crap. It is just nothing other than the privative wake front, a posterior attribute of the loss of inertia. By throwing this light on a principle, another principle, we have created a privation that cannot be reified because it has no autonomous existence. It's not an attribute of anything. It is the posterior attribute of something that is an expression. All Maxwellian field equations have uh, vectors and uh, time uh, variants in the equations of the four Maxwellian field equations. So the necessary byproduct of that illumination is the creation of shadows. Space is just nothing other than the shadow of the reciprocation, the toros, of magnetism, which is a dielectric field. We cannot reify something that does not exist as something that acts on something. That's no different than saying that, you know, the reason that my, uh, you know, house, my roof has a leak in it is because of unicorn. You know, it, you're, you're, you're saying that something is uh, the result of something that doesn't exist. That space is something that acts on something or does things. This is, human beings are not, we're not that intellectually involved, at least, uh, evolved, at least most of us uh, are not. Excuse me. Not used to talking a lot, believe it or not. Space and time are nothing. Time is nothing other than a measure of magnitudes of things that have Cartesian magnitude. Um, space has no properties. We have reified something as that which is a principle that does something in action. It is so deeply ingrained in Star Trek and Star Wars and all our science fiction crap and the uh, the mental retardations and farts of uh, Einstein, general relativity and quantum mechanics, they have reified. See, when you eliminate out the ether, and nobody can eliminate out the ether, but what they've done is they've tried to, I think, that there is no ether, but of course, you know, the existence of anything is absolutely impossible without the ether. You want to call ether inertia or inertia ether? I don't give a damn. It doesn't make any difference, but... You have to then reify something as something that acts on something else. And by eliminating out the ether, the only way that you could try to logically rationalize the interactions of bodies and force and motion and acceleration is to reify a privation. It's like saying, well, you know, if you stick somebody in a shadow, they, gets, they get cold as opposed to the sunlight. Well, that's true. Well, therefore, if you stick someone in a shadow and they get cold, that means a shadow is something that does something. Well, I can kind of see where you see that, but here's why you're a freaking idiot. A shadow is a privation. You cannot reify a privation as a principle. It's a posterior attribute resultant to something else. The absence of light. So then I would say to someone like that, well, here's why you're a dumbass. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why you're a dumbass. And this is the same dumbass insane pseudo-logic of these knuckle-dragging mental midgets of general relativity, quantum mechanics, that are all the bastard cult religion behind Einstein and his idiot believers, is that you have reified a privation as something which does something, or that it is a principle which has the ability to act or do something of itself and of its own accord, but that is not the case. A shadow, just like space, is not something which can do anything. It is a privation. And there is no such thing as time as an autonomous principle. You know, remove the soda can, there goes the shadow. If I remove uh, inertia, if I remove illumination, you know, there, there is no shadow. You know, there, a shadow has no autonomous existence. Why do people don't understand? Because people don't have classical educations anymore. Humanity is just, uh, I hate to say this, it sounds awfully rude, but humanity is just a... Uh, you know, a lump of knuckle-dragging morons that, uh, you know, I've uh, been watching Lucille Ball commercials eating friggin' Cheetos and Pringles potato chips and, uh, you know, working a dead-end job pushing paper from one side of the desk to the other. People are not taught how to think in school. They're taught how to pass tests. They're taught how to... Uh, to stand in line, to follow orders. They're taught how to think like everybody. They're taught to be little stupid robots. They're taught how to be another cog in a wheel. Nobody in school or college is taught to think. 
This is, see, this is the total opposite of a classical education in play. See, back in the day, if you were a rich bastard, your child got an education in the works of uh, Pythagoras, Plato, Plotinus, and Aristotle. Unfortunately, Aristotle, but still a lot better than anything today. If you were a rich son of a bitch, your child got a Platonic education. And you were taught how to think. And man, you, you know. That's why when you read some of that old crap from the 14th and 15th century, even if its original language was in English, you're like, damn, that's some tough crap. I can't comprehend it. That's some deep shit. And that's what people today, they like read some of this stuff from like the Dark Ages and they read some of this stuff that's in English to begin with, and they're like, oh shit, man, this is deep. And this is like, man, I mean, this is hardcore. This would give my, this would give my uh, professor at college, you know, a mental explosion. It's not that they were, we have de-evolved as a, a species. Humanity is definitely de-evolved. Technologically advanced, but we're intellectually stupid. Much, much dumber than our predecessors were. Is that we are not taught to think. We are taught to believe in bullshit. We're taught to follow a straight line. We're taught how to pass tests. The only thing you ever learned in college and the only thing you ever learned in school was how to pass a fucking test. Okay, and that is no lie. And teaching somebody how to pass a test, that is not teaching them how to think. How to be reasoning people with a mind and intelligence. And uh, that is why humanity is going down the shitter very, very quickly. And it's too late. It, it is too late. It's, it's TL. Too, too late. Space is nothing. As Nikola Tesla told you, I'm going to paraphrase Nikola Tesla because uh, he doesn't uh, live, t live anymore. If Nikola Tesla was living today, he'd be like, word up, dumbasses. Space does not exist. Space has no properties. If you think it does, you're a dumbass. So that is how I'm going to retranslate Tesla into modern language for modern human beings. And Tesla flat out said flat out said that Einstein was a dumbass. And for some odd reason, I'm going to trust the guy that invented the modern world instead of a fuzzy-haired asshole with a theory. And by the way, his theory is entirely stolen ideas from Hanley Poincaré. Einstein himself never had an original thought. The guy was a dumbass. And yet here, all we are today talk about Einstein. Most people know who Einstein was. Oh, Einstein, he was a smart. No, Einstein was a dumbass. Nikola Tesla was the genius. Thanks. Catch you later. Bye. Thank you.